Vector fields. A vector field is a function that associates a unique vector f of p with each point in a region in two or three space. So notice the bold face capital F there indicating that this is a vector function and the input is a point P that either has two coordinates if we're in two space or three coordinates if we're in three space. For example, if we're in two space, then we have F of a point X, Y would be a vector with two components, little f of X, Y, I plus little g of X, Y, J. And in three space, the inputs would be points of the form X, Y, Z. And the outputs would be a vector with three components, little f of X, Y, Z, I plus little g of X, Y, Z, J plus little h of X, Y, Z, K. Let's look at an example in two space first. So here we have a vector field f of X, Y equals negative Y, I plus X, J. Let's look at a good way to visualize this vector field. Looking at the XY plane here, let's plug some points into this vector field and see how to visualize this in the XY plane. Well, for example, F of zero, zero is the zero vector. Remember that the zero vector can be represented geometrically by just drawing a point. In the XY plane, we draw that point at zero, zero because the input is zero, zero. Similarly, F of one, zero, we're plugging in a one for X and a zero for Y. We get the vector zero I plus one J or just J. The vector J points straight up. Notice that the initial point for the vector in the XY plane, I use the point one, zero. The input gives us the initial point of the vector and then we draw the vector starting from that initial point. In this case, we start at the point one zero and we draw the vector J, which goes one unit straight up parallel to the Y axis. Now's a good time to pause the video and try to draw some more vectors in this vector field, plug in various points, staying within this 12 by 12 grid, and then resume the video and check your answers against mine. I'm just going to draw a few of them. You could just draw a few of them as well, just to make sure you have the hang of it. Okay, let's look at some more. F of one, one. When we plug a one in for X and a one in for Y, we get negative I plus J. In the XY plane there, to draw that vector, negative I plus J, I started at the point one, one, and then I went left one, up one to get to the point zero, two, F of one, two. So when we plug a one in for X and a two in for Y, we get negative two I plus J. So starting at the point one, two, I moved left two units and up one unit to sketch that vector. Let me just put down a few more. You might want to pause the video, look at the other vectors I drew there, and just go ahead and verify that those are drawn correctly based upon the method that I just showed you. Let's try an example in three-dimensional space. F of X, Y, Z equals Z, I minus X, J plus K. You may want to pause the video and plug in a few different points and draw the corresponding vectors in three-dimensional space, and then resume the video to see the examples that I do. Okay, so I'm going to do F of zero, zero, zero. That's simply the zero vector. So I put a point at the origin. F of zero, one, zero. So I'm plugging in a zero for X, a one for Y, and a zero for Z. So we get zero I minus zero J plus K. So that's just K. So starting at the point zero, one, zero, which is along the Y axis, I draw the vector K, which points straight up in the Z direction, one unit. F of one, zero, one. While plugging in a one for X, a zero for Y, and a one for Z, we get I minus J plus K. So starting at the point one, zero, one, I move one unit parallel to the X axis, then one unit to the left, parallel to the Y axis, and then one unit up, parallel to the Z axis. And you could see that trajectory as well as the vector itself drawn there in green. Divergence and curl in three-dimensional space. So for this discussion, we're going to start with a vector field whose inputs are 
points in three space. So the points have three coordinates and the outputs are vectors in three space. So the outputs have three components, little f, little g, and little h. So first the divergence of f, there are two different notations we could use. We could use a dot product notation, that's del dot f, or we could write div of f. That's equal to the partial of little f with respect to x, plus the partial of little g with respect to y, plus the partial of little h with respect to z. And the curl of f also has two notations. Sometimes we use a notation similar to the cross product, del cross f, or we could write curl f. And just like for the cross product, there's a nice mnemonic device we could use to understand the definition of curl pretty easily. We look at a determinant, i, j, k. In the middle row, we put the partial respect to x, the partial respect to y, and the partial respect to z. And on the bottom row, we put the component functions, little f, g, and h. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is not a real determinant, just like in the cross product. This is just a mnemonic device to help us understand the definition. But basically, if we go down the main diagonal, we have I partial respect to Y and H. We think of this as the middle row operating on the bottom row. So the partial respect to Y of H, or in other words, the partial of H with respect to Y times I. And then going back in the other direction, starting with I, we get the partial of G with respect to Z times I. So doing that for all three of the components, we see we get the partial of H with respect to Y minus the partial of G with respect to Z times the vector I, plus partial F with respect to Z minus partial H with respect to X, J, plus partial G with respect to X minus partial F with respect to Y, K. Let's try an example. So here's a vector field. I want you to find the divergence and curl of that vector field using the definitions I just gave you. Pause the video, try this yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. Okay, so first the divergence of f, it's a pretty straightforward computation. We take the partial of the first component with respect to x, which is just 2xy cubed. The z to the fourth just goes to zero. Then we take the partial of the second component with respect to y, which is just 8x to the fifth yz. And then we take the partial of the third component with respect to z, and we get minus 6y to the fourth z to the fifth. Notice that when we take the divergence of the vector field f, we get a scalar function as our answer, which kind of goes along with the notation of the dot, because the dot product gives us a scalar, whereas the cross product gives us a vector. So we're going to see that when we compute the curl of this vector field, we're going to get a vector function or another vector field. The curl of f, putting into this determinant, notice on the bottom we have the three components of the vector field. And now when we compute the curl, we take the partial with respect to y of negative y to the fourth z to the sixth, which is negative four y cubed z to the sixth. And then going the other direction, we have minus the partial with respect to z of four x to the fifth y squared z, which is just four x to the fifth y squared. That gives us the i component. For the j component, we take the partial with respect to z of x squared y cubed minus z to the fourth, and that's just negative four z cubed. And going the other way, we take the partial with respect to x of negative y to the fourth z to the sixth, which is just zero. For the k component, we take the partial with respect to x of 4x to the fifth y squared z, which is 20x to the fourth y squared z. And then going in the other direction, we take the partial with respect to y of x squared y cubed minus z to the fourth, which is just 3x squared y squared. And we see that we have our final answer for the curl right there. The gradient field of phi. If you remember, when we take the gradient of a scalar function, phi, we get a vector whose components are the partial derivatives. That is actually a vector field. So the gradient of phi is the partial phi with respect to x i plus the partial of phi with respect to y j plus the partial of phi with respect to z k. This is sometimes known as the gradient field of phi or just the gradient of phi as we've seen in earlier lessons. This is also called a conservative vector field. The scalar function phi is called a potential or a potential function. As long as phi has continuous second partial derivatives, the curl of the gradient of phi is always zero. You may wanna pause the video for a minute and try to verify that yourself before I show you the verification.
Okay, so here is the verification, the curl of the gradient of phi. Notice that in that determinant, the bottom row has the partial phi with respect to x, the partial phi with respect to y, the partial phi with respect to z. And when we evaluate this determinant in the way I described earlier, we see that we get the second partial of phi with respect to y, respect to z, minus the second partial phi with respect to z, then y, i. And since we're assuming phi has continuous second partial derivatives, by Clarot's theorem, those two things are equal, so the difference will be zero. The same thing happens with the J and K components, so we wind up with the zero vector.